Welcome everybody to the DC Scrum user group. As always, we are here to connect, share, and learn about all things Agile and Scrum. My name is Fadi Stefan, and I'm gonna be your uh, presenter for today. Few uh, quick announcements. Um, as always, we'd like to thank our regular DC Scrum user group sponsors, Kaizenko and uh, Excella Consulting. If uh, any of you need uh, Agile training or coaching, please reach out and we'll see how we can help you out. Uh, today's event is happening in collaboration with the Agile 20 Reflect Festival. This is a festival celebrating the 20th anniversary of the signing of the Agile Manifesto. There are over 600 events happening online worldwide over the entire month of February in all sorts of time zones. So I highly encourage you to check it out. I'm uh, happy to be kicking things off uh, with today's talk, but there are many, many awesome talks happening throughout uh, the month. Few announcements uh, from the festival organizers. This is a purely a volunteer effort. Uh, if you feel like making a donation, please visit agile20reflect.org to help support make this happen. Uh, the festival also has a uh, code of conduct uh, and basically means let's treat each other with kindness and respect. And if uh, you see any issues throughout the month, please feel free to contact events conduct um, at agile20reflect.org to highlight any issues that they need to be aware of. All right, so the festival kicked off uh, today. And throughout the entire month, there's going to be awesome events. Two that I'd like to particularly highlight is uh, an event run by the Scrum Alliance. On February 11th, they're going to have a panelist. Uh, and you'll get to hear firsthand from the signatories of the manifesto on their thoughts. So I highly encourage you to attend. Uh, that's happening, going to be happening live on the 11th. And then another event happening in the DC area. Uh, February 11th through the 13th. This event is being run by uh, a group of uh, various meetup groups in the DC area. I also highly encourage you to check it out. This is going to be a three-day uh, event. And again, all of these events are free. All right. Uh, to find out more and to view previous DCSUG presentations, you can visit uh, wdcsug.com and you can follow Kaizenko. Uh, to kind of stay in the loop on events that are happening uh, both locally and globally. And that is it for the announcements. We are going to get started. All right. So today we're going to take a uh, behind the scenes look at the writing of the Agile Manifesto. All right. Now, uh, before we do that, let me quickly introduce myself for those of you don't, that don't know me. Uh, my name is Fadi Stefan. I'm a certified Scrum trainer and Agile coach. My background is in uh, software development, and I basically help teams and organizations uh, transform, innovate, and deliver. So if any of you need any help, please feel, feel free to reach out. And when I'm not doing that, I usually uh, ski, and I'm actually right now in coming to you. I'm usually in DC, but today I'm coming to you from uh, Salt Lake City in, in Utah. All right, so enough about that. Let's get started. Before we go to February 2001, uh, I'm going to take you to the 1990s. Right? We're going to go about 30 years ago and see what was going on back in the 1990s. All right. Let's check one thing out first, and let me see if this is going to work. I'm going to run a quick poll and ask you, you know, what do you think came first, uh, Scrum or Agile? You should see a poll popping up. All right, let's see the results. Almost, uh, almost tied, uh, 55 to 45, say Scrum or uh, Agile. Can you see the results or that doesn't show up for you? Nope, all right, let me see now. How about right now? All right, so this is, uh, that's, the re that's the results of um, our quick poll. All right. 
Stop sharing. Let's keep going. This is uh, Kent Beck. All right, Kent Beck is the creator of XP or extreme programming. And back in the late 80s, early 90s, all right, back in the late 80s, early 90s, uh, Kent Beck was working with Ward Cunningham on better ways of developing uh, software. And uh, Kent Beck really got to put these ideas to practice while working with uh, Ron Jeffries and later Martin Fowler on a project called C3 at Chrysler. And that's really where XP or extreme programming uh, kind of evolved and the practices were validated. And probably a few years later, Kent Beck uh, published his uh, first book on extreme programming. And uh, right before that, they wrote a lot about their practices on a wiki, all right? Ward Cunningham is credited for kind of creating the first wiki and a lot of the thoughts and ideas behind XP and extreme programming were published on a wiki and that kind of generated a lot of movement, gener generated a lot of thoughts around, around the uh, extreme programming. People got interested in it. And one other person uh, is James Grenning. He, got, he also met uh, Kent and uh, got on board with XP and particularly he focused on using kind of the, the ideas behind XP in embedded uh, software development. This group here, we are going to refer to as the uh, XP contingent. And I'll talk, I'll, we'll figure out later a bit why. All right. Now, at the same time, right, we're talking here in the 90s, at the same time, on the East Coast, uh, in Boston, Jeff Sutherland was coming up with a new approach based on uh, lean thinking and uh, the work of uh, Takashi and Nunaka from the new, new product development game. Um, and Jeff, along with uh, Ken, who was also coming up with uh, a new approach based on complexity theory and a research uh, from uh, DuPont Research Facility, uh, he came, uh, they collaborated together uh, to produce Scrum. All right, so that was in 1995, right? So for the poll question, really Scrum came out first and a whole bunch of other ideas came out first before Agile. And that's what we're gonna talk about as we keep going. Uh, Mike Beadle is probably one of the first Scrum practitioners that helped uh, Jeff and Ken really validate a lot of the ideas uh, behind Scrum. And these three are gonna be referred to uh, as the kind of Scrum contingent here, right? So we had a bunch of people from XP or Extreme Programming, a bunch of folks uh, from the Scrum world. We also have John Kern, and John was working with Peter Codd on something called feature-driven development, all right? Feature-driven development. We also had Ari Van Bennekem. Ari was working in uh, Europe with a group referred to as the DSDM Consortium, uh, also working on a method called, basically called dynamic system development method, all right? Similar approaches to what was happening um, in the US. Uh, Jim Highsmith, around the same time as well, was working on an approach called adaptive software development. And you also had Alistair Coburn working with IBM and developing a methodology called Crystal, all right? So all of these approaches, XP, Crystal, uh, DSDM, Scrum, and so forth, at that time in, in the mid to late 90s were referred to as lightweight methods or lightweight processes. Lightweight methods or lightweight processes, all right? So let's uh, run another poll. Which of these lightweight methods or lightweight processes have you already heard of, all right? Let's try this again. All right. 
Let's close the poll. All right, here are the results. All right, um, XP and Scrum are uh, kind of the most popular here, followed by feature-driven development, DSCM, Crystal, and then adaptive uh, software development. I, Right now, uh, at that time in the in the late '90s, XP was kind of by far the the most well known. Uh, I'd say the SDM because it was coming from Europe was less known at that time. Uh, it was more popular, obviously, in, um, in Europe. Uh, today, uh, you see kind of uh, Scrum really uh, pushing pushing forward here. Most of you have heard of of Scrum. All right. Let's keep going. Some of you in the chat have asked about uh, um, Uncle Bob and whether we would put Uncle Bob with the XP group. Uh, we're going to talk about that in a second. All right, I'm going to go to the 2000s now. In the spring of 2000, Kent Beck was holding a leadership summit, XP leadership summit in Rogue River Valley in Oregon. And a whole group of the XP folks were at that summit along with uh, Robert Martin, or otherwise known as Uncle Bob. And at that summit, there was a discussion as to whether the XP practices, XP was very, very kind of specific on the technical practices that developers should be applying. Things like pair programming, test-driven development, automated um, acceptance tests, uh, merciless re refactoring, and so forth. So. Uh, there was discussion as to whether XP should be something larger, something broader. Uh, that discussion didn't go very far at, at that particular uh, uh, summit in the spring of 2000, but uh, Martin Fowler was also at that event. And later, uh, Martin and Uncle Bob met up to kind of discuss that idea and think through whether it had any merit. And, and they agreed that maybe we should explore this a bit further and expand it beyond just the XP folks. Let's, let's invite uh, these others that are practicing similar approaches. Like I said, they were called lightweight methods or lightweight processes. And let's, let's have a summit and see if there's any commonalities between the work that we're doing and see if we can come up with something uh, broader or more encompassing than the actual practices themselves. So Uncle Bob reaches out to Alistair Coburn and Alistair had run similar events in the past. He had run events in, in uh, Salt Lake City and Snowbird. And he had also run events on cruise ships in Norway. And when Uncle Bob reached out to Alistair, Alistair was about to organize another one of his events. And he was like, you know what? This idea sounds good. Let's, uh, let's merge mailing lists. All right? Let's combine mailing lists. Um, I like your idea. We'll go with that. So what ended up happening is uh, more people got invited. Uh, that included Andy Hunt and uh, Dave Thomas. Um, Andy and Dave didn't necessarily have a uh, methodology per se, but they had written an, arch an article on uh, pragmatic programming. Uh, and that article later became a book and then later became a book series, the Pro Pragmatic Programmer uh, kind of series. And it was more about uh, the culture, the behavior, the professionalism, and the approach of uh, developers. And it aligned very closely with some of these lightweight methodologies. Another person that was invited was Brian Merrick. Brian was bringing in a testing perspective, he was doing a lot of research on, you know, building quality and moving testing upwards um, or shifting it to the left, not waiting till the very end to do testing. So he was doing a lot of research uh, around testing. And also uh, Steve Meller was invited. Steve uh, was doing work with UML and particularly kind of gen auto-generating code uh, from UML, All right? So uh, this is the group that ended up uh, showing up at this event. Uh, others were invited, but this is the group that ended up showing up. You had the kind of XP, the XP folks that we just mentioned, the Scrum folks. Folks, uh, the feature-driven development, Crystal, the SDM, uh, adaptive software development, as well as uh, Andy, Dave, Brian, and Steve, along with um, Uncle Bob. All right. So 
the decision was to have it in February 2001, and the options were uh, in Anguilla in the Caribbean. Um, another um, kind of expert was uh, re referred to as Big Dave Thomas. He had a place in Anguilla and was like, hey, I, we can have it here. Um, or in uh, Snowbird, Utah, right? So uh, if you were invited, right? If you were invited and you had the option to be on the water in the Caribbean in the warmth weather or uh, in the snow, all right? Which one would you go with? Let's launch another poll, all right? If you had the, the option to choose a warm weather location on the beach or snowbird cold, All right, we're closing the polls. Here are the results. All right, oh, 70% to 30% prefer the warm Caribbean weather, all right, um, being in Anguilla. All right, that, 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 that's not, uh, that's not what the, uh, group ended up uh, picking, all right? Mm -hmm. They ended up going with uh, Snowbird, primarily because it was harder to reach, right? Uh, it, getting to the Caribbean would probably have required one or two stops to get there. Uh, Snowbird was right outside of Salt Lake City. So um, international airport, easy to get to. So the group decided to go with uh, Snowbird. And, and because of that kind of others, couldn't make it, right? I mean, whichever location you're gonna pick, some, some people are not gonna, going to be able to make it. Let's keep going. All right, so it's gonna take us to February 11th, 2001 in Snowbird, Utah. We had these 17 folks that came together to discuss the current state of software development and you know what can we do to improve it? All right, here's the actual uh, reservation that we did uh, at that time, um, Alistair, as well as uh, Jim Highsmith, both kind of were in these Salt Lake area. So they took care of the logistics and they prepped um, the reservations and everything. So the event happened from February 11th to February uh, 14th. It was actually the evening and then and then a two day, two day events afterwards. And everybody left uh, the following day, All right? So let's let's kind of dig deeper as to what happened on those events. All right, uh, John Kern uh, had actually a copy of his notes. I know you can't see, but we're gonna zoom in on relevant parts of his notes. What did happen is Alistair Coburn had uh, pre-printed discussions that were happening on the wiki, coming prepping for this meeting. So he had pre-printed uh, copies of these. And this particular copy is coming to us from uh, John Kern's notes. Uh, this was kind of the agenda. It was meeting discussions and then uh, lunch break, and then in the afternoon was, you know, fun time, you know, no, no uh, work discussions. Then in the evening, they'd have another evening discussion, and then dinner, right? Uh, the picture is going to be blurry. Uh, these are um, old, old photographs, so not, not 4K for sure, all right? So uh, not high resolutions, all right? Cool. Let's keep going. Uh, Here's some thoughts coming into the meeting as to what people wanted to accomplish, right? They wanted to see kind of wh whether there were mutual needs, whether they could collaborate on books, whether they could uh, launch a conference, um, set up some type of consortium, all right? And, 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 and so forth. So these were generally the ideas that they were kind of thinking through as they were coming into the meeting. All right, the, the highlights here are mine, all right, just so we can kind of focus in on a few areas. Uh, this is Uncle Bob. Uncle Bob was thinking he wants to set up a website so that people can go and learn about these lightweight processes or methods. And he wants to create a document that we can sign and kind of uh, stand behind, you know, fundamental tenets of what these lightweight processes are, all right? All right, 
Um, here are Alison Coburn's thoughts. All right, he was interested in fending off fat methodology. All right, the, the vast quantity of RUP. RUP was uh, the rational unified process at that time. All right, Anderson was a big consulting company. I think today Anderson is um, uh, Accenture. Right? Anderson is Accenture. Right. Uh, but uh, salespeople putting ideas into CIOs' minds that you should have lots of paperwork to be safe, right? Um, people that want to turn key methodology that will work straight out of the box, okay? So, uh, somebody's highlighting early mentioning of safe. We, we will come back to that, yeah, we will come back to that. Uh, this is, uh, who is this? This is Andy Hunt. All right? Andy Hunt saying it's not only uh, CIOs that are convinced that they have a they need a lot of paperwork, but they also need a lot of bodies. And you, we kind of need to put in a major effort to put forth ideas that less is more across the board in software development. All right, so some, some interesting early thoughts as to what was in everybody's mindsets at, at that time when we were, when they were getting to that meeting. All right. So what happened in this meeting? Uh, initially, everybody got, got, it, got together and the XP folks immediately pulled out the index cards. People wrote down kind of the topics they wanted to discuss and they formed, up, formed out an agenda uh, for, the next, uh, for the next two days. Uh, again, grainy pictures here. This is, this is uh, Alistair and Ken Schwaber. Um, I think uh, uh, it's Jeff Sutherland towards the end. It's Brian Merrick in the plaid. Brian Merrick in the plaid. I think this is John Kern probably right next, right next to him with the computer. Um, Andy Hunt and Dave Thomas first. I'm gonna th think that's Kent and James Grenning and Ron Jeffries towards the Next, and let's see who's in the back. Can't really too grainy, but Mike Beetle probably. Right. All right. Um, so that's a group. And uh, it's first started out by each group kind of presenting their processes. These are uh, John Kern's notes. So each group kind of presented on XP, on Scrum, because not, not all of them kind of knew the processes. They all more or less knew each other uh, from the object-oriented world or heard of the, each other, but not necessarily the methodologies that they were going to present. So here's some early notes on XP. You can see test, test first, continuous integration pairing. Again, a lot of these technical practices that we talked about. Um, some notes on, on Scrum, uh, having a backlog list of features that evolves um, over time. Here's uh, some uh, notes on DSDM. Uh, DSDM was seen as kind of the heaviest of, of these processes uh, at that time. Uh, Crystal, uh, Crystal didn't have a single process. Crystal varied the approach based on uh, the situation. So based on the size of the project, you had different colors that you would apply. And uh, let's see, adaptive software development. And the idea is that uh, you, you, you need to adapt and, and change as, you, as you're learning, right? Instead of being kind of anticipating and forecasting the future, you try things out and you adapt. All right, cool. So after, you know, the presentations, there was some afternoon fun. Uh, a lot of these folks ski. So uh, here's uh, Alistair and uh, uh, Jim Highsmith. Uh, skiing that's Jim as well it's John Kern the slopes and snowbird here they are you know about to take the uh, uh, the, the tram up uh, up all the way to the mountains all right um, others kind of uh, did uh, just hang out in the lounge or kind of relax in the hot tub so it was remember a morning session afternoon fun evening session and then a dinner break all right, cool. Let's keep going. So what happened next? They all agreed that, you know, lightweight 
or lightweight processes. They don't want, they do not want to be referred to as lightweight. So they decided to kind of come up with uh, a better name, right? Better name to what, what their approaches are about. Um, many, many suggestions besides lightweight processes or lightweight methods. There was the idea of maybe we should call it essential or responsive or lean or adaptive. Uh, through kind of elimination, I think adaptive and responsive were kind of the last that were there. Uh, adaptive was something that Jim Highsmith was already using. They don't want, they didn't want to give anybody particular kind of advantage. Somebody suggested agile, so they kind of eliminated all of that and went with agile. All right. So next day, more and more discussions were happening. Uh, there was a lot of, you know, pushing and trying to get the conversation or the, the group to go one way. Each one of these folks was kind of, what's the right word here? Uh, rallying for uh, their approach. And they were trying to see what was common between them, right? What approaches were common between them. However, they kind of got to, uh, at some point, an, a kind of analysis paralysis. There's a lot of great discussions, but not, not much movement going on. And at some point, uh, Dave Thomas and Martin Fowler got together and kind of tried to kind of write down what were all the discussions that were going on here? How can we kind of summarize them? And th there was this push that they didn't want to be negative. They wanted to be positive, right? They, they didn't want to be against something. They wanted to be for something. So uh, Dave and, and, and Martin Fowler came up with three statements of value, put them up on the board. And then the rest kind of came in right after lunch in the afternoon. And they were like looking at the board and kind of agreeing agreeing with these statements, refining the statements. The statements grew to five, and then they went back to four. I don't, I don't have the details as to what that fifth statement was and what, what dropped back to four. Don't know what that was, uh, but uh, you know, the, uh, Dave Thomas basically says, we probably grew it till five, and then, and then it, went, it, went back to, it went back to four. All right, so. Uh, let's let's kind of I want to highlight a bit about what what some of these discussions were right we talked about this they talked about this double double positive which I just mentioned and the idea is they didn't want to be against something they wanted to be for something so it's one positive thing over another positive thing it wasn't for over something negative uh, and and the they were all in agreement that the first principle is about the individuals the first principle is about the individual. So you see uh, this one got uh, slightly changed and modified. So instead of social networks, they went with individuals and interactions over processes and tools, pretty much all in agreement that this should be their kind of first value statement that they should rally again over. Uh, working code over pointless documentation. This is how things kind of started in the discussion. And again, they don't want to be negative. So that was a change from pointless documentation to comprehensive documentation. And then uh, working code, this is something kind of uh, Steve Miller, I think, pushed for. He wanted to move things higher up. Remember, most of these folks were developers. Most of them cared about code. Uh, Steve was like, let's, let's push it higher up. And, and this became working software, right? It became uh, hot push the team from thinking of code and thinking more broader a bit into working working software and, and so forth. So this is the kind of grainy picture that we see on the Agile uh, Manifesto website. Again, it's uh, the group kind of going over the statements as they were uh, refining the value statements themselves, all right? This is a recreation a couple of years later, uh, Uncle uh, Bob was in uh, Salt Lake City and drove drove up to Snowbird, went back to the same conference room where they they met up and wrote the manifesto statement on it and you know snapped the picture of of this is after you know agile became popular so he went back and snapped the picture 
individuals and interactions over processes and tools, working software over comprehensive documentation, customer collaboration over contract negotiation, and responding to change over following a plan. All right. Uh, here, these are Andy Hunt's notes, and you can see how uh, the order kind of kept on uh, changing until they, they settled on what the, the final order needed to be uh, with that. And what, what's also interesting is the manifesto has with it 12 principles. And we can see here from Andy's notes, the initial ideas uh, that were kind of being written to generate these principles. However, the team never got to get to the principles during, during that meeting. The principles happened later. They just ran out of time. And what they agreed upon were the four value statements uh, that we just discussed. All right. So let's talk about what happened over the next couple of months, all right? Via email, uh, the team worked on these principles. You know, initial ideas started in the meeting, but via email, kind of the team elaborated on, on these principles. And they had also agreed that they're just launching a movement. They don't want to own it, right? So they created what is known as the Agile Alliance, a nonprofit to help promote these ideas, right? No single one person wanted to own it. And they created kind of an alliance to help push this forward and, and promote it. This is uh, an early draft from what was posted on the kind of Agile Alliance website, the manifesto itself with the 17 uh, signatories. And it's important to highlight that the first statements is about uncovering, right? It's not uncovered, it's uncovering, right? And we are helping others to do it, right? We are uncovering and helping others to do it. And the last statement is, uh, you know, the double positive that I talked about, right? There, there is value in the items on the right. There's more value in the items on the left, right? So keep that, uh, keep that in mind. Uh, these are the principles, right? This is a draft and the principles were kind of set up to be targeted towards customers, managers, and uh, the team, right? Customers, managers, and the team. All right. slanted towards the managers and slanted towards the team. Uh, if, you, if you look at the website today, you know, these headings are not there, but it's interesting to, to, to see, you know, how, what they were thinking of when, when these kind of first got created. Now, the, the values, everybody was in agreement. They refined them and refined them until everybody was in agreement. With the principles, remember it happened over email. There's a lot of leeway and the item where there was a lot of discussion is this item number three, uh, delivering working software frequently from a couple of weeks to a couple of months, right? Uh, and it's interesting because I still have these discussions uh, with teams today, right? And during that time, back into 2001, some in the group were saying, yep, you have to deliver in, in a couple of weeks. And others are saying, oh, there's no way. There's no way you can deliver in a couple of weeks. Uh, that's just not possible. So there was a back and forth then. And that's why you kind of see a bit vague language, right? Frequently, you know what I mean? It's a bit, a couple of weeks, couple of months, just very, very open to interpretation uh, because they couldn't really come, come to an agreement as to what that is. And, you know, funny enough, 20, 20 years later today, well, we kind of have the same discussion. Can you deliver something in two weeks? No, it's not possible. Is it possible? And so forth. Pretty interesting. The same discussions happen again. All right, folks, 20 years later. Let's see what's happening 20 years later. Uh, this is a summary. It's not, any, it's not all of them unanimous. I'm just going to share with you some thoughts as to uh, what the authors think about what's happening now 20 years later. The first one is diversity, right? Everybody that showed up to that meeting, uh, 
who was a middle-aged white man, right? So if you ask the group, uh, they would have said, you know, we would have, we would have benefited from uh, diversity. Uh, I, I looked at the invite list and I could only find uh, one woman that was um, on the invite list. I don't know if others were, were there, but on the mailing list, there was only kind of uh, one, uh, one woman. Uh, the group highlights specifically that maybe they would have benefited uh, from Mary Poppendike. Mary Poppendike really pushed uh, lean software development, but at that time in the late 90s, they were not that familiar with her. With her. She really played a big role right after the manifesto was created, right after the Agile Alliance was, was launched. But uh, at that time, uh, they, they did not know her. So diversity is one thing uh, the team would have, would have benefited. All right, somebody's uh, uh, saying that it's true. One woman was uh, was invited uh, based on what Alistair said at another meetup. Yeah, cool. Uh, the name, all right. Some and by name here, I'm meaning the term agile. All right, they they spent a lot of time figuring out what they want to call this, and some feel that maybe agile was not the right name, mainly because everybody wants to be agile, and when everybody wants to be agile, everybody claims to be agile. And Agile today uh, has, when it's so popular, it becomes so watered down, water, watered down that Agile, again, uh, Agile becomes meaningless, right? Today, today, that name, the term Agile no longer has the same uh, meaning behind it as what they thought it would be in 2001, because um, everybody says they're doing Agile. All right. So... Um, you know, extreme, extreme programming, everybody was against that because that was, that was kind of too, too, out, too out there. And people think that maybe they should have went, went with something that was a bit less desirable. This is kind of a, uh, you know, something becomes so successful that it kind of backfires. So uh, maybe should have picked something that was less desirable and at least it would still have meat around it uh, from, from a name perspective. Uh, dogma is another issue, right? These were practices. These were values. This is a mindset, a philosophy. Uh, a lot of what's happening today it has become kind of very dogmatic and people want to follow certain rules. And that was not just not the intent at the time that this was kind of developed. Uh, another is this over-focus on processes and tools, right? Over-focus on processes and tools. Uh, people say, oh, we want to be agile. What tool should we use, right? People are forgetting that it's about the individuals and then the interactions and then the processes and the tools are there to support uh, the team, right? So people now are very heavy on the tools and people are even heavier on the processes. Um, and, and some specifically highlight SAFE, that SAFE has, is, is growing and becoming very heavy and it's, it's looking more and more like RUP which is what pushed the team to come up with these value statements to begin with. So we're kind of you know, circling back 20 years later to where we started. A message that my mic got disconnected. Can you, can you still hear me? Yeah, okay, cool. So some, uh, some are talking about Agile now being a lot more than about software. Uh, so maybe they should have picked a different word. Maybe it should have been uh, products, you know, working products or working uh, solutions to kind of expand it beyond the world of software. Many others are more interested in software and kind of highlight that maybe we should have emphasized more the technical practices because today many, many teams are not necessarily delivering working software every iteration. Uh, so uh, specifically the XP folks feel that we should have emphasized more of the technical practices um, because uh, things like pairing, test-driven development, uh, regular refactoring, automated testing, uh, continuous integration, these are gonna be essential for you to be able to deliver working software at the end of, the, at the end of every iteration. And you know, that is not happening today. Everybody says they're doing Agile. Not a lot of people are focusing on delivering working software at the end of every iteration, right? So a lot feel that 
Um, I think Ron Jeffrey says, uh, maybe we should have added a, a sentence at the bottom that says, and working software, we really mean it or, or something along, along, along those lines. All right, last uh, is about collaboration. All right, the last item is about collaboration. Uh, this, this was about kind of creating safety for the developers and breaking down the boundaries between business and technology and creating kind of a more collaborative environment and empowering developers, right? Empowering developers to be, come up with solutions. We wanted to kind of create a, a approach of autonomy, uh, mastery, and purpose. And we wanted to create an environment where people can be creative, people can come up with suggestions, both towards the product and towards the process. Developers clearly understand the value, the business value that they are working on and not just working, not just seen as resources, working on a specific task or uh, working on a specific method or function and so forth. Uh, so that, took off in the early 2000s. However, today, Agile is all about management, right? Uh, and it's, it's basically a management tool. Developers are kind of less and less interested uh, with, with these practices and with this approach. And if you go, you go to an Agile conference, it's mainly about project managers and maybe product people, but not necessarily uh, developers. They just don't attend. And there's kind of less and less interest in this. Right, so just um, to kind of gauge who's in here, I'm gonna launch, launch one last poll and ask you to kind of see how many people here are developers. All right, let's see that. All right, we got about 80%. And, and that is the, remember, when this started, most of these folks were, you know, hardcore developers coming from the object oriented world, uh, small talk. A lot of them came from the small talk world. Um, today, when we talk about Agile, when we go to conferences, less and less interest um, in, in, in this concept here. So that, that is something to keep in mind. All right, uh, that is, I believe, that is all I wanted to share with you. Um, I do have resources. This will be up, so you'll be able to access it. Uh, you can read for yourself blog posts. You can kind of see the notes from uh, John and, um, and Andy on the Agile uh, Uprising website and so forth. Uh, what I do want to do, though, for those of you that want to still hang out, is um, run breakout rooms and kind of get your reaction to, you know, 20 years later, where are we uh, with Agile? So for those of you that are interested in sticking around, I'm going to kind of run a breakout room. We'll kind of do an eight minute kind of discussion. And, you know, the topic is going to be, where do you think we are you know, now, uh, 20 years later? 20 years later, uh, we, you heard some thoughts from the from what, what the authors think. We're interesting to see uh, what are your thoughts? All right, and then we'll come back and do we'll come back and do some Q and A. All right, so let me launch out the breakout sessions. Let me launch. Um... Right, just a short question: Where are you doing that? Do you do you have this um, this slides uh, this talk available on your LinkedIn profile or on Twitter or something? It it will be available. Um, yeah, and uh, the, the slides as well as the um, the recording of the presentation will be available for all of you to review. All right, and if you go to WDCSL, you will you will find all previous presentations, and this one will be posted there as well. And I believe the Agile Twenty Reflect Festival, because this is being done with in collaboration with them, they will be uh, posting uh, the the recording on their website as well. Awesome. Yeah, I found you through the festival people through the awesome. website. That's great. All right, folks, uh, we're just going to do a quick eight minute uh, breakout session and, uh, and then uh, we'll come back and answer some more questions.
All right, folks, that's going to be it. Thanks a lot for, for joining. It was uh, awesome uh, discussions in the breakout room. And uh, if any of you need help with uh, coaching and training, uh, please uh, feel free to reach out. Here is my contact info. Feel free to connect uh, on LinkedIn or Twitter. And thanks again for, for joining us. And remember, uh, this festival is happening all month long. And there's going to be tons and tons of sessions all online from all over the world. Hope you can join on any of these sessions and hope to see you again uh, at the next DC Scrum user group event. Take care, everybody.